After the first Italian war between 1494 and 1498, France and the Spain monarchy sought to resolve their difference over Naples diplomatically. France wanted to assert its right to the Neapolitan throne, partly with the excuse of paving the way for a possible return to the Holy Land. For his part, Ferdinand the Catholic also maintained dynasty ties with Naples and intended to incorporate the kingdom into the Castilian Aragonese crown. For these reasons, both parties agreed in the Treaty of Granada 1500 to occupy Naples and divide the territory equally. The plan will be carried out a year later with the invasion of both kingdoms of Naples and the dethronement of the Neapolitan king. Hostilities between the French and the Spanish did not take long to manifest themselves in the face of differences over territorial boundaries. Skirmishes became more frequent, leading to assaults on castles on both sides and making war inevitable in June 1502. The War of Naples was then a fact and both sides had to prepare for the conflict. Gonzalo Fernández de Córdoba, already known at the time as the Great Captain, had retreated at the beginning of the war to Barletta, in the south of Apulia. He was aware that his forces were vastly outnumbered by the French, so he avoided direct confrontation. He awaited the arrival of reinforcements to begin a new offensive against the French, which would occur in the spring of 1503. Among the reinforcements were Germanic landskinets, elite warriors respected and feared throughout Europe. After the victory of Ferdinand of Andrade in the Battle of Seminara, April 21, 1503, the great captain realized that it was time to enter the French positions in Apulia. In order to speed up the march, he sought to it that all the knights carry a foot warrior in turn. This allowed them to reach the village of Serignola in Apulia within a week but with enough time to prepare the ground in their favor. It was not counting on the arrival of Fernando de Andrade's troops before the French attacked him, so entrenching himself was a priority. To this end, the great captain ordered his troops to dig a ditch and use the earth to build a parapet reinforced with stakes. The defenses, together with the elevated position, he considered that it could palliate the numerical superiority of the French. Within the Hispanic army, the infantry was the main protagonist. The recent reforms of the great captain in colonels, predecessors of the Tercio, affected notably the Spanish military organization. The infantry was composed mainly of pikemen and also halberdiers, normally deployed in squares. With this formation, the pikes greatly increased their effectiveness in countering enemy cavalry charges. To harass the opponent from a distance, there were units of crossbowmen and arquebusers, with the later playing an increasingly important role. In fact, from then on, the arquebusers would gradually play a greater role in the battlefields, being more and more present as the 16th century progressed. In addition to pikes and arquebuses, it was also common to see swordsmen among the infantry as rodileros. Their function was to counterattack the pikes in close combat. The landskinets deserve a special mention. They were mercenaries who were already present in the times of the Great Captain. It was common for the Hispanic monarchy to have the service of a group of landskinets skilled in close combat thanks to the halberds of the Swainhand. As for the cavalry, the Great Captain had taken away the prominence they had had during the Middle Ages. Its function was to support the rest of the army, and so it was in the Battle of Serignola. For their part, the French had a different military composition. The army of the Duke of Nemours was the result of the successive military reforms of the 15th century called Campagne de Ordenance. The basis of these reforms was the professionalization of the army, with a special emphasis on the heavy cavalry. Each knight was supported by other figures such as men-at-arms, squires, pages and archers. Foot warriors such as archers used horses to move about, although not for combat. As for the infantry, it is worth mentioning the use of the Swiss mercenaries, of great reputation thanks to their skills with the pike. Gunpowder was also present in the French army. We know that the Gascon infantry, famous for their arquebusers, were present in the battle. In addition, the Duke of Nemois had even more artillery than the Spanish, although much of it arrived late to the battle. 
The two armies clashed on April 28, 1503. The great captain was well aware that the French continued to rely on heavy cavalry as one of the main threats. He ordered his cavalry to charge the French cavalry to attract their attention. Following a pattern identical to that of the celebrated Tornafulle of the Reconquista, Spanish cavalry withdrew after a brief skirmish and attracted the pursuit of their opponents. French cavalry had taken the bait as they were now within fair inch range of their artillery and the well brigaded arquebuses. The French cavalry attempted to fall back slightly and flank on the left but were completely decimated by gunpowder. Among these cavalrymen was the French leader himself, the Duke of Nemours. This caused the beginning of a second phase of the battle where the Swiss pikemen under Chadu command decided to charge against the Spaniards diagonally to the Spanish defenses. Although he did not wait for the artillery and the vanguard troops commanded by Ivry d'Aller, Chandu tried to attack the center with the bulk of his troops. Faced with this situation, Fernandez de Cordoba ordered to withdraw the arquebusers to place them later on the flanks. The parapets in the center would be occupied by the Lanskinets, waiting for the Swiss to fight in melee. This last move proved to be decisive. While the Lanskinets contained the thrust of the French infantry, the crossbowmen and arquebusers decimated their enemies on the flanks. The large number of casualties, including Chandu, forced the French to retreat. Seeing that victory seemed imminent, Fernandez de Cordoba ordered all his troops to charge the Swiss infantry, who tried to retreat in an orderly manner. During the counterattack, the Spanish cavalry was dedicated to pursue and harass the French vanguard of Ayrouidalegre that was retreating. It is said that in the course of the battle, before the charge of the French infantry, the camp powder of the Spanish artillery blew up. Before this misfortune affected the morale of the troops, the great captain haranguid his men by saying, Courage! These are the lights of victory! In a fortified field we do not need cannons! In any case, Fernandez de Córdoba's approach and decisions were fundamental to the victory at Serignola. This battle marked a turning point in the War of Naples, but also laid some of the foundations of modern warfare. Infantry and gunpowder had dethroned Calvary as the queen of battles, something that would be seen again in later battles such as Garigliano 1503 and Pavia 1525. It also marked the beginning of the dominance of the Spanish monarchy on the battlefields until the second half of the 17th century after the conclusion of the Thirty Years' War. Hey, do not close the video yet. Before you go, please subscribe to the channel and leave us a like if you like the content. It will help us to grow and continue making much more content. Now, without further ado, we say goodbye.